was hoping by now to be able to give you a full review of the Telfin. Unfortunately, due to our you know world situation right now, I haven't really been able to use it for the, the main purposes I bought it for. Primarily, that was bike packing. However, I would say that I've ended up using it in sort of far more diverse situations than I ever really bought it for. And as such, I think I've got enough there to at least give you some first impressions and just a few thoughts on the Telfin and the situations I've used it in and, you know, how happy I am with it at this point. So with that being said, let's take a look at it. I've used large saddle packs for years and they have always been really good. My current one, by the way, is an Ace Pack saddle bag, the 14 litre one. Um, I heartily recommend it, thinks a great piece of kit. When I've been using large saddle packs though, um, prior to the last sort of like maybe 12, 18 months, um, it's always been in the context of off-road bike packing. So there's two points I want to make about why I've always got on with saddle packs um, within the context that I've been using. Now, a lot of people don't really get on with saddle bags because um, they, they, they feel like they wiggle around a lot. And honestly, I would say that's not my experience, but I don't think this is really the saddle bag's fault. I think this is the way in which people pack it. A couple of things there. One, it should be bulk, not weight. And secondly, don't overpack it. Now, within the context of me doing some bike packing on uh, a mountain bike with a full frame frame bag that's kind of an easier situation to manage you've a just got more space in the frame bag than i do my current frame bag on the cgr and secondly it means that you can like put the weight in the middle not on the end yeah so not only does that mean that the saddle pack is not going to wobble around so much but also it, it actually doesn't affect the handling of the bike so greatly like i say though that situation's changed for me a little bit with the using the CGR now and wanting to use the CGR for bike packing. So I've got less space generally. Um, and I kind of felt like, right, I don't really want to keep packing up that big saddlebag any more than I, I currently do. So I was thinking maybe let's take a look at the Telfin because it's bigger anyway, 20 liters rather than 14. So there's just more space there to put stuff in. But also as well, it's a significantly more stable thing if you wanted to put a little bit more weight in it. So that was really the first kind of initial driver for me taking a look at the Telfin or just taking a look at other options generally. When you first take this out of the box, it is a nice piece of kit. Right. I mean, you, you, you take it out and like, you know, you're looking at these like nice carbon struts here, like you're feeling the weight of it. I mean, even though you know how heavy it is, when you've actually got it in your hand, it was kind of like, oh, yeah, that is pretty light, actually, for what it is. I mean, obviously, with the bag on as well, um, it, it, it gives you a little bit more weight, but it's a nicely designed piece of kit. Now, I went with the quick release uh, attachment. Um, the CGR has uh, rack mounts. One of the reasons why I went for this one particularly was the fact that actually it doesn't need rack mounts. You can purchase a axle uh, to replace the axle that you would normally use with um, a bike that doesn't have rack mounts. And this quick release system will work with that as well. Having several bikes that I might want to use this with that don't have uh, rack mounts, I thought, yeah, why not? Like, um, I, I went with the quick release as well because again I thought why not I want as much utility as possible so being able to whip it on and off nice and quickly 
uh, that's always going to be useful in my book. Of course, there are other systems out there for um, bikes that don't have rack mounts. Uh, most of these seem to be like stuff that just clamps onto the seat stay. You know, people say they're sturdy and all of that kind of stuff, and I don't doubt that for a moment. However, I'm less comfortable with clamping what could be a whole bunch of weight onto a part of the bike that just isn't designed to take that weight in that way. Now, maybe I'm being overcautious, but yeah, I just always looked at those types of racks and I don't know, it just, there was just something for, for me personally that I just wasn't, wasn't into with that. So one of the things that I found that was different about using a saddle pack for say a long Odax compared to like a sort of general bike packing trip is the fact that I've been finding that I've wanted to get in and out of my bag, whatever that it ends up being, a lot more on Odaxes than I ever did bike packing. Um, and one of the problems I think with a large saddle pack is that, you know, it's just a pain in the ass to get in and out of kind of quickly. And it, it just feels fiddly and annoying. You can only have one thing on top, um, you know, unrolling it out, undoing like all the buckles, doing all of that, like, I don't know, it, it, it just became a little bit of a, a bind for me, a little bit of an annoyance. And that's one thing that's great about the tail fin here. So, okay, you, you, you've probably got the same amount of buckles as, but once that's open, okay, that's a nice big opening into the, uh, into, into the area, like. And so um, you can just get to whatever it is you want that you've got in there far more easily than you can with the saddlebag. You're not pulling things out, getting to a thing, putting stuff back in again. The other thing that's kind of handy here as well is that it does have, which side is this on? Ah, oh, well it does have a little document pocket on the side like, so I know great for a birthday card. Um, and if we look at the other side of it, you can get straight into the main area of the bag without having to go in the top. So for instance, if you've got a little packable waterproof or what have you, and you just pack it on that side of the bag, you can just quickly, you know, pop open the zip and grab it without having to open the whole thing, which is also pretty handy. Now, that is a pretty good dry bag. I've used it in some like fairly horrendous rain and it's been fine, but I have seen some other people that have um, reviewed it and they have had, you know, some minor link leakage after prolonged use in heavy rain, but I can't say that that's my experience of it. So I already mentioned as well that I've used it in quite a few different situations. Now I didn't buy it for all of these, but as I had it, I thought I'd, I thought I'd use it. Now I've done a little bit of commuting in the last sort of like three months or so, um, and I decided to use it for that. And again, very useful. Not having to have a rucksack on my back like I normally would. No one misses a rucksack, right, when you're on a bike. The quick release in that situation is pretty good. You know, all right, we've got secure bike storage where I am, so I would be able to leave it on the bike. But actually, it's kind of a, a convenient bag to just kind of carry in as well. It might be nice if there was maybe somehow a way of kind of clipping this up to the bottom of the bag for when you take it out. I mean, maybe that would be a useful addition somehow. But, um, and I mean, I guess you could probably like what, like, maybe put the straps around or something and, and do something with that. Like if you were gonna be using it day in, day out for commuting, maybe that's something you would do. Another thing that I've used it for is shopping, going to pick up takeaways um, and just going down to Sainsbury's. Um, yeah, again, didn't really buy it for that, but thought, you know what, let's just give it a go for those things. And yeah, it's it, it, it's been really good for that as well. I mean, both of those situations, particularly going and picking up uh, the takeaways that I've got, I wouldn't want to have been putting those in a big saddle bag, yeah? And I would have been riding along otherwise with probably them hooked on the handlebar, like. So yeah, some other usage that has come from it in the sort of everyday cycling kind of bracket that it's been really useful for. Lastly, I want to talk a little bit about the cost of this. Now, this is not a cheap piece of kit.
Now, where I think I can illustrate my point here the best is with frame bags. Now, I've got loads of frame bags, okay? And I've got them all the way through the price range, okay? So uh, at one end of that, I've got the 25 quid pod sacks off the shelf special, right? And at the other end of this, I've got the 110 pound uh, custom made straight cut designs bag. Now, when you look at these two, two bags, they are functionally the same. However, they are absolutely night and day when it comes to the workmanship, when it comes to the quality of the materials used, the design, the use of space, the features. And all of those things there are things that are important to me in terms of my use and why I bought it and, and, and my ongoing use of it. But trying to justify why one is five times the price of the other one to somebody else is quite difficult. So I think really what you need to do here is always look at like pieces of kit and say, right, is that in my budget in the first instance? And if the answer is no, then to a certain degree, well, forget about it then. Look at something else that is in your budget. Ultimately, I think everybody has to look at these things within their own context, within their own use of it. If you're going to go and do a bike packing trip once every couple of months and you might get out three or four times across a year, sure, don't spend the money on a really good quality outdoor sleeping bag. If you're going to be out every month, for instance, though, or more, then it's probably worth going and spending the money. And I think this is one of those things like that, particularly as well in this in this uh, situation where actually I've ended up using this piece of kit because of a lot of its utility far more than I ever thought I would be. So I'm getting even better value out of it. I do acknowledge though, you know, look, I'm in a privileged situation. I've got disposable income with basically zero responsibilities. So I'm able to spend money on my hobbies and it not be, you know, not going in the mouths of the kids I don't have. So, you know, you, you have to take that context as well. On the whole, I think this is an excellent piece of kit. This is a first impressions though. I do have a few other tests I wanna put it through, basically multi-day bike packing. But at this point, I just really can't see a reason why this wouldn't be excellent for that as well. Hopefully by the end of the summer, I'll be able to give you a full review and get into all the detail about the spec and all the options that I went for.